Alhamdulillah Walhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam Al Rasulillah Wa ala alihi Wa sahbihi Wa man tabi'a sunnatahu Ilyamuddin Assalamu alaikum Wa rahmatullahi Wa barakatuh And welcome again To another episode Of your weekly Islamic chat show Guest of the week Coming to you From Sharjah TV As always I'm your host Ismail Bulag Today we're going to talk about uh, Happiness Something that everyone Searches for Something that everybody wants So we're going to Give us some tips or explain how can you unlock happiness. And this is something we always hear now, unlock secrets to life or unlock the secrets to success. So we're going to, inshallah, give you tips to unlock happiness. So to do that with me is Brother Muhammad Khan. Assalamu alaikum. So like I said, this is, we, we hear this term a lot, you know, unlock, unlock the keys to success, to everlasting, whatever it may be. We, a lot of this is, you know, going around now, different, different, advise different uh, tips to, to various things. So today you want to discuss on, from the Islamic perspective on how can you uh, unlock happiness? Because there's lots of things out there, of course, um, I'm sure we're going to touch upon this, that will unlock happiness to some extent, but a lot of it is temporary happiness. So there's a lot of things we get happiness from, but it's very uh, temporary. Like you may go, for example, on a wonderful holiday while you're there, so you maybe feel extra happy and you go back home, you lose that happiness. So it's a temporary happiness. It's not something that will be there, you know, ongoing. That's right. And uh, that's the reason it's important for us uh, to understand the concept of happiness. Uh, and inshallah, in this short episode, you know, we're just going to look at a small framework as to how can we achieve true happiness. Because, uh, subhanAllah, we see there are a lot of books written on the subject uh, not from a spiritual perspective, but uh, yani, a lot of people and you know, these self-help gurus and whatnot, these coaches, life coaches, apart from that, you have a lot of content being created in the media, to so say it's films or it's events, programs. So we see that the primary focus uh, is about happiness and everyone wants to achieve this happiness. Now, there are means to achieve this happiness. And that's what everyone is trying to uh, you know, find. Uh, some might just think money brings happiness. Some think, uh, as you said, you know, a vacation or like you know, uh, a, a farmhouse outside the city and you know, like where no one is there to disturb or maybe you know, things, maybe someone on an island or other things like fame and followers, these things bring happiness. However, uh, we're going to look at a framework which is practical and which is backed by Quran and Sunnah because we're not just here to show that uh, a religious aspect brings happiness, although there are now modern researches done which shows that those who are religious people, they are more happy as compared to those who are non-religious. This is like a modern study, not uh, done by Muslims, but it's done in the West. So that is one aspect of it. However, that's not our primary uh, thing to discuss. But what we are seeing that, uh, what is the practical way to achieve happiness? And for that, we have to go through certain things. Now, firstly, if we see that everywhere, there is a, a concept of pleasure and enjoyment being pushed. So like, uh, as we discussed in our previous episodes about followers and social media and how the influencers, they are actually influencing <laughs> the world. So, you know, some with millions of followers <clears throat> influences individuals, influences communities and so on and so forth. Again, uh, the back end uh, reality is that it is all about pleasure and happiness. It's funny you mention that because a lot of the time people, um, they try to base their, their, this or search for this happiness based upon what they're seeing from certain, uh, certain influencers. And we know a lot of these influencers, um, they're paid to go on certain holidays because it, for example, because it promotes that destination or that particular hotel. So, but it, to the people who are following them, they then think that, you know, look how happy this person is. Every month they're traveling and they're doing this and they're always smiling. So that also these help to 
give that, you could say, false idea that the true, that true happiness is in, for example, traveling all the time, or it's staying in all these hotels all the time. And, and this is a big part of it is, I think more so now than maybe in the past, it's because of the, you know, we see so much of these, like you said, promotion of what is supposed to be true happiness via social media. That's right. And uh, like why we uh, primarily focus on this, because now in today's time, uh, this aspect has become like uh, a big issue where people see that uh, perhaps, you know, it's more valuable than money. Followers have become more valuable than money to acquire because people spend money to acquire followers. And once they have these followers, they can again go back to, uh, you know, making money out of it. So that's how things are working now. Uh, however, we've seen uh, that this again does not bring happiness or true contentment because there are famous influencers who have quit this whole thing and they have come out in open mentioning that uh, you know, they are in uh, severe depression and this is what shows that this does not bring happiness. Similarly, uh, in the past, today, uh, in the current uh, yani century which we are living, we've seen billionaires, millionaires, whom people think and read about and think that these people are, they must be really happy because they have everything on their fingertips. But then there have been cases where they committed suicide. There have been cases where, you know, they have gone into deep depression. And this again leaves us, uh, you know, with the question as to what brings happiness. If it's not money, if it's not uh, fame, if it's not followers, if it's not, you know, a, a luxury, uh, a luxurious vacation, then what is it about? So definitely these things might have like instant uh, gratification or it, they might have like, you know, just this pleasure for some time, enjoyment or, you know, pleasure for some time. But then this is not the actual happiness which human beings are looking for. It's interesting you mentioned that because, um, like you said, there's been so many um, famous people, actors, actresses, that, you know, like you said, they have what everybody would imagine. You know, often people say, you know, if, I, if only I had this much money and this kind of thing, I'd be so happy. I wouldn't be, you know. And you mentioned this, we're not talking about one or two, we're talking about many. In fact, maybe even a large percentage, sooner or later, they may not have gone as far as becoming alcoholics or drug addicts or commit suicide, but many of them will come out, many of them, and will say, I was suffering from depression or one of them, he'll disappear for a few years. He's not in any movies, or she's not in any movies, or they haven't released any new records, or whatever it may be. And then they come out after a few years and said, I, I was away because I was battling depression, or I was having a drug habit. But they have, like you said, many of them, they have pri they, private jets, as many cars as they want, biggest houses they want, can travel whenever they want. They have the kind of money that many of us, many people dream of having. But That's at the same right. time, so many of them, and even we, f we find ones that uh, have made their living on making people laugh and becoming happy, you know, made their millions in making people laugh. And they always, they, they themselves are always telling jokes and smiling. And then they've said, you know, uh, I've been battling depression for most of my life. But to see this person, not just from the aspect of money, but from the way they act every day, you think this person is the happiest person in the world. So it's, a, it's, it's quite amazing when you look at the contrast because that's something people always say. You know, if only I had this much and that much, I'd be so happy. That's right. Because uh, the problem here is uh, tying our happiness or pleasure or contentment to a specific worldly subject. So X amount of money will bring me happiness. If this is the mindset or if this is uh, the objective, then this is a problem. Or say uh, X amount of followers, or, or uh, if I become famous or fame or something, uh, you know, which is a worldly thing, if it is tied to happiness, then this is a problem. Why? Because if the person is unable to achieve that, then it's a disaster. And that's what happens. Those who are in depression and those who commit suicide, the major cause is because they were unable to uh, acquire or achieve something from this world. Maybe it's a, a, you know, a girl whom 
the, the person loved, you know, uh, which is again uh, out of the wedlock, which is anyways not permissible in Islam, or if it was specific amount of money or sp uh, specific amount uh, of, uh, you know, or certain uh, way of lifestyle. These things, when people are unable to achieve, they just uh, go in depression and they commit suicide. So the first thing to remember is that we're not supposed to tie our happiness with something which is temporary and related to this world. Yeah, things like money, a good house, a comfortable uh, car might bring comfort and happiness, but it's a part of it. Not that if you don't have that, you're not happy. So this is what we are trying to uh, focus here because if we see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's the best role model. And uh, we are looking at his lifestyle because he practically lived it. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he practically lived it. And it's, it's a practical demonstration of how to be happy. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on some occasions, he had a lot of wealth. And it is reported like before he passed away in those years, he had uh, a lot of wealth, but then he used to give it in charity. He used to give it in sadaqah. Uh, on one occasion, he slaughtered about 100 camels, uh, you know, during the time of uh, Adha, Eid al Adha. Sometimes he slaughtered two sheep. And sometimes Mother Aisha, anha, she reports that there was nothing for months in the house except dates. So they didn't lit the fire, means they didn't cook food in the house for months. So we see this, sometimes he had wealth, he had, uh, you know, this worldly possession, sometimes he didn't have that. But what was his uh, mindset and what was his outlook towards life? He was always content. He was not uh, complaining. He was not, uh, you know, uh, longing for these things to be happy. And that's what he even taught the Sahaba, the next generations and, you know, the whole Muslims are supposed to follow that. He's our perfect role model, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba we see, there were Sahaba who were rich, very rich, like Usman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. And there were Sahaba who were poor, who only had one piece of cloth to wear, to cover themselves. But we see the contentment, the happiness they had, subhanAllah. Uh, people today might just you know, give up everything for that happiness the state of mind they have, the state of happiness they were in, subhanAllah, because they were actually focusing on the true means of achieving happiness. And that's what, inshallah, we're going to look and we're going to strive to do that, uh, which comes with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, the stronger our relationship is with Allah, the more happier we will be. Yani, just to put it you know, in one sentence, uh, the, the, the stronger our relationship with Allah, the more happy we will be in this life. And to move ahead, you know, uh, what we must uh, actually uh, look at, and specifically in this episode, we are going to look at four fundamental pillars to attain true happiness. Number one is to understand the true meaning of happiness. What is happiness? So as we discussed already, you know, people are tying their happiness to money, fame, followers, this is not true happiness. What exactly is true happiness? This is what we need to understand as a human being. We need to sit and ponder that what is uh, happiness? Then only we'll be able to achieve it. Like say for example, someone who even wants to buy some clothes or a car, he goes, he does some research, he sits, okay, what is it about? What are the specifications? What am I supposed to do? So on and so forth. What are the details? And then this is what we are supposed to know, what is true happiness and what is not. So this is very important for us to know as human beings. Can I hold you on that point? It's time to go for a break. Join us after this break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now before the break, we started to go through those, the four points you mentioned with regards to, to happiness. Uh, so the first is that we understand the true meaning of happiness. Number two is to accept the real nature of life. And this is very important. Uh, like, what is this life all about? Uh, we are here on this earth. We are living a life. Uh, what is it about? So this is also very important, which we'll discuss briefly. And number three, to recognize the factual purpose of life. And number four, take the steps in achieving happiness. So we can't expect, you know, we are sitting and we will be happy by... <laughs> Uh, you know, just automatically. That's not how it works. So we need to take those steps towards achieving that happiness. 
So to begin with, uh, what is the uh, you know, definition if we see, uh, if we look at Oxford, the definition of happiness is the state of feeling or showing pleasure. The state of showing or feeling pleasure. Now there's one more word which is more closer to uh, you know, the Islamic perspective, which is contentment. And this contentment means, this word contentment means a feeling of being happy or satisfied. A feeling of being happy or satisfied. Now, as we saw that, you know, uh, these worldly things, they do not bring happiness. And to understand the real nature of life, we also need to see that these wrong roots of happiness must be avoided. Like, you know, drugs, alcohol, movies, women, all of these things might bring some amount of happiness can bring a lot of disaster in this world as well because we see you know people who think that this will bring happiness they end up in jail sometimes for maybe you know lifetime prison you know those who are involved into these wrong things like drugs and alcohol and similarly uh, other aspects where you know people think money will bring me happiness and he goes stealing uh, he becomes a thief he might also end up you know into uh, any big problems in this world itself in the hereafter, it's a different case altogether. If someone is doing things which are not prescribed in Islam against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has to bear those consequences. But we're talking about in this world itself, you know, that when people think this will bring me to true happiness, whereas it can have, you know, evil consequences in his life. The idea to understand is how the Sahaba and how the Prophet ﷺ in the first place, his companions, they were happy despite having difficulties in their life, despite having, you know, they were sometimes suffering with poverty, uh, they had family members, uh, you know, oppressed, killed, like the Prophet ﷺ, he lost his beloved wife Khadija and, uh, you know, the year of grief which is known where he lost his uncle Abu Talib, he lost his wife, uh, still he was always content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On one occasion, and it's important for us to you know, derive a lesson from this and for the viewers, on one occasion, his son Ibrahim, when he passed away, the Prophet ﷺ had some tears in his eyes. So the Sahaba, they said, O Prophet of Allah, you are crying. So he said, These, this is the mercy of Allah. But our tongue will not say anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was sad because he lost his son, but he said, our tongue will not utter anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to be sad for a moment or for some period of time is fine, but to utter things which are not permissible or to question the decree of Allah, this is a problem, and then that leads to more problems like depression and you know, so on and so forth. So we see that uh, we have to understand the true concept of happiness. Now. What is Islam's take on this good life, happiness, pleasure? If we look at one verse of the Quran, the translation of which is from Surah Nahal, ayah number 97, Allah mentioned in the Quran, those who believe and do righteous good deeds, whether male or a female, we shall grant them a good life. We shall grant hayatun tayyibah. This is the Arabic phrase, uh, which is translated as a good life, and it is also contentment, true contentment of the heart. That's what the scholars have defined because it's not related to money, fame, luxury. Yes, it can. This is a part of good life. If someone has it and he thanks Allah, it's good. But if someone doesn't have it, still, it doesn't matter. The good life means that he's content at every step of his life with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is given to a believer who is a male or a female who works righteousness and has iman. So we see these two conditions, to have faith and to do righteous good deeds. This is a means of achieving happiness. This is what Islam says. The person will have a good life in this world and he's, he will also have a good ending and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a good end in the hereafter. Irrespective, he might be going through you know, some difficult times in this world, sickness, illness, poverty, that's fine. But then at the end of the day, he will be happy, he will be satisfied and content in his heart. And this is what actually is happiness, this is actual happiness, which even other people are searching for, but they're unable to find in these materialistic things. It's the state of your mind and the state of your heart that you're satisfied and content. 
like you said, because that is the that is, because that is the happiness that is is within, like you said, in the heart. This is the you could say the 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 real happiness. You know, not the like you mentioned the material happiness that comes and goes and flutters and uh, and uh, sometimes is there, sometimes isn't there. So this is this is the real you know happiness that we have to work for. Is the like you mentioned the internal happiness. That's right. And if you look at the flip side, Allah mentioned the Quran Surah Taha, Oman Aurada an Zikri fa inna lahuma ishatan banka. That whoever turns away from my remembrance, he shall have a difficult life, a miserable life. And subhanAllah, again, on one aspect we see what is required to attain happiness. On the other hand, on the other hand, Islam is clearly defining that you're not supposed to do this, otherwise. Not only that you won't have happiness, but then it's going to be a difficult life. And what is it that once a person turns away from his uh, actual purpose of life, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where a person loses his connection with Allah, he's bound to have a difficult life. And again, a difficulty, uh, as many people think, it's just related to you know, money or say illness, if someone is ill, maybe he's in a difficulty. No, that's not the case. Because we previously discussed uh, from the Sahaba. The Sahaba, they were sick, they were ill at many occasions. They had, uh, some Sahaba, they had diseases, but then they were happy. So we see that sickness or illness is not a means towards going to depression. But again, it's the state of the heart and the state of the mind. And this is affected once we lose our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah mentioned, that if you turn away from the remembrance of Allah, you will have a difficult life. So a person possibly can have wealth, money, luxury, everything, but then he's in a miserable state. This is because his connection with Allah, his creator, iman, righteous deeds are not there in his life. So our primary thing to focus is iman, we need to fix our iman and our righteous deeds. If you are not, then we start from today, like at least from the basics, the requirements, the fundamental pillars of iman, the fundamental pillars of Islam, like the faraid, the salah, zakah, sawm, hajj, these things at least, of course, to begin with tawheed, believing in Allah alone and worship, worshiping Him alone, these things need to be in place. And then automatically we'll see as, uh, you know, this happiness, coming and this, this peace descending, this sakina, which is, you know, the Arabic term, uh, you know, descending upon us, inshallah. Now, uh, the second point is to accept the real nature of life. So, we tend to think that this life is paradise. And again, not to forget, a lot of times, uh, certain people in the community push this concept, like some influencers, uh, and some programs and some, uh, you know, uh, films and movies and so on and so forth, that this life is it, this is everything. And whatever you do here, you, you, you should strive to achieve everything and you must be very happy here and, you, and everything must be achieved here. There was that concept that was going, going around, that YOLO, you know, you, some rapper or someone came out with, like, you only live once, which, in, I mean, Obviously, what he meant by that, obviously, you do only live once in this world, which means you should do your best to live it correctly. But what he was on the opposite thing, you know, you only live once, so do whatever you want and do whatever you want to get happy. I mean, they may say as long as you're not, you know, hurting somebody else kind of thing. They'll, they'll come off with a disclaimer, not like if, it, if you know, if someone get, gets happy by robbing people, no. But they mean like when it comes to following your desires or whatever you want to do, just go out and do whatever you want um, because, you know, it's all about, you know, you only live once kind of concept. So this was, this was being pushed out a lot. And the whole concept was literally, you know, do whatever you want. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Just go ahead and do whatever you want. That's right. And uh, again, to bring the concept of hereafter in our life is extremely important because uh, just a couple of things, you know, uh, if we look at... Uh, leaves us, you know, in, in a very astonished state that, you know, a person can die anytime, you know, at any age, uh, he might be striving to achieve something. And then when he's just near to do that, he might just, you know, 
uh, Allah might take away his soul. So that is very important. There's no fixed time like, okay, everyone is going to reach 60 and then uh, go away from this world. No, 14, 25, 35, any moment in time. So it all depends how that specific time period on this earth, yani in this life given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was spent. And that will uh, have results in the hereafter, which is everlasting, paradise or hell. That's what uh, will be the deciding factor. As one of the great scholars mentioned, be practical and realize that this world is not paradise. And your 100% ease and whatever you wish will be granted in paradise. So we know that in paradise, whatever one desires will be granted to him, subhanAllah. And this is what sadly people are trying to implement in this world. Therefore we say, understand the actual uh, realities of this life. You, you're not gonna get everything in here. Whatever you get, be happy with it. Yes, to keep goals, to uh, achieve something, it's fine. But not to tie everything to that, you know, uh, to, the, to the extreme that someone goes and commits suicide if his favorite team loses uh, maybe in the World Cup. This is insanity, you know, this is like just making a mockery of our beautiful life. This life is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the blessings are also from Allah, the trials are also from Allah. So we have to always look at the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him and be patient upon the trials which come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this quotation, you know, is subhanAllah, uh, that uh, whatever we wish will be granted in paradise. Don't be practical in this life. And you know, it's like, uh, if we see a worldly example, it's like we walk up to the pharmacy and we tell the pharmacist that I need leather shoes. You know, it's like going to the wrong place and uh, asking for the wrong thing. Over here, we want everything, you know, whatever we desire. Oh, I want this, I want that. <laughs> That's not gonna happen here. You're not gonna get everything in here. But it's that whatever you get, you have to be content with that. Similarly, uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned again, uh, this one hadith is very clear and explicit that live in this world as if you are a traveler or a stranger. So this shows us, you know, how we are when we travel. Uh, what is our mindset? What do we, uh, what are we looking at? What are we trying to achieve when we are traveling? We are not looking at our travel or our visit, you know, to be the ultimate. We leave our home, our children, our family, everyone just for one travel trip. So similarly, if we apply this example, you know, our actual home is paradise. Our actual destination is to reach to paradise. This world is just a temporary, temporary transit. It's going to hold you on that point. It's time to go for another break. Join us after this break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now, just before the break, you mentioned the hadith. And what's interesting about the hadith, you know, about uh, you know, be in this life, life as if you are a stranger. And the word in Arabic, abr as sabil So it's, it's translated as a traveler, as a wayfarer. But it literally means someone who's passing through. Abr as sabil Someone who is passing down the path. SubhanAllah. So this is showing us what? That, you know, this life is is like a like you're traveling through it. It's, it's a journey. It's not permanent. It's not forever. So to to look at it from that concept, and of course, like you mentioned, we don't say that we should be um, you know live a monk style life, for lack of better words, um, where we don't aim to strive for the things in life. But they are not the. We should not look at them as the ultimate goal. For example, you mentioned before Uthman ibn Affan, and we know he was very rich, and he was, he was a businessman, but he would spend, where did he find his true happiness? It wasn't in his money, in his business. He was known that he would wake up in the night and pray and spend hours prostrating, reading the Quran, and this is where he found his true happiness, even though he had the money, and he would try to give away a lot of the money to, to seek the happiness of the reward of doing this act of worship, giving charity, rather than using it uh, just to you know, have, have fun, as they say. So of course, we, like, like you're mentioning, we, of course it's okay to strive uh, for wealth. It's okay to strive for some of those things that give you that um, temporary happiness that like we mentioned, 
like traveling and the certain, the certain, the certain luxuries of life. But that is not, that is not the ultimate. That is not the ultimate goal, and, and not the. I think if we find many people who have struck the balance, so they they have that, they are practicing the religion, they are praying, and they also are well off. A lot of them will say to you, look, you know, I have this. That they find that the. There's nothing that quite compares to the happiness that they get when they're doing the five daily prayers, or they've they've attended a particular lecture, or they've heard a particular like moving speech, or they've been to the to make Umrah or Hajj at the the Kaaba. They can't you you know they'll say like whatever holiday I've been on, it didn't compare to these kind of things, you know. Subhanallah, and uh, again uh, from from uh, the Sahaba. You know, uh, at this moment, I don't recollect his name, but uh, there was a Sahabi who was very rich. And uh, when he used to pass from uh, the streets, so for a long period of time, people could smell the perfume, you know, which he had applied. So any perfume is a luxurious uh, commodity, even today. Uh, and he used to apply that. And SubhanAllah, when he accepted Islam, he found true happiness in Islam in following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we, we know, I mean, those who have read uh, history and the seerah that uh, the early Muslims, the Muhajireen, they had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations, you know, in terms of everything, losing their money, uh, being tortured, oppressed, and so on and so forth. So when this Sahabi died, you know, even the shroud was not, uh, uh, yani, he didn't have a complete shroud to cover his body. When they used to cover his feet, his head used to be open. When they used to cover his head, his feet used to be open. And subhanAllah, this was the state. So this shows us that he strived for true happiness. He strived for the hereafter. He gave up his you know, riches and wealth, and he was basically exiled from his you know, position and his uh, family. So, you, so we can say, in reality, he had what is often class, as we've mentioned, as of what would be considered to be like, he must be, you know, the pleasures and the riches. And he was, he was from that time, he was one of the elite, one of the rich, the, like you said, the best of clothes, best of perfumes, the best of food, the best of accommodation. Uh, and what everybody would usually say equates true happiness. But he lost all of that because, like you said, he, 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 he sought that real happiness, the, the inner happiness, the happiness of Iman, the happiness of, of faith. That's right. And again, uh, coming to the point that what, why are we here? You know, so he understood that. And the one who's truly happy in this life, he understands what is his purpose of life. Because subhanAllah, to be honest, you know, if we don't know the purpose behind a specific project or a specific, uh, you know, uh, say in worldly terms, a business or anything, you know, people say, Yani, what are you doing here? You know, if, if someone just walks to his job, he doesn't know what is his purpose, what is his objective, basically, what is he supposed to do here? Uh, yani, people are going to say, like, are you okay? Or, Yani, what is wrong with you? Similarly, uh, we uh, want to understand, we want people to understand that, recognize the purpose of this life. This is primary. Recognize the purpose of this life. We are here for a purpose. All these things like, which is part and parcel, you know, materialistic things and money, fame, this will come, go, some will have, some will not have. But the actual purpose of life is to recognize our Creator and worship Him alone. This is what is required from us. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have created not the jinn and men except to worship me. So there are books, tons and tons of books being written on you know, how to be happy, what is the purpose of life, research is being done. Our Creator who is, uh, you know, who has created everything, the heavens and the earth, He knows best what is the purpose of our life and He explains it to us. Our purpose of life is to worship Him alone. And this life will have tests. It will have good times and it will have some trials and tribulations. So this is the reality of life which we must understand. And there was, there's a famous author, you know, his book is quite famous, uh, yani, Millions and millions of copies have been sold showing, you know, uh, what effective people do. And he brings a point, you know, where he mentions like a uh, win-win situation. So he says that, you know, those who are successful, those who have a positive mindset, they always look at win-win. 
they never see the negative aspect of it. They see that whatever the situation is, if they lost a deal or something happened, they always see win-win situation. And subhanAllah, if we look in uh, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he mentioned, amazing is the affair of the believer. If something good happens with him, he thanks Allah. And if something of uh, bad happens, which he doesn't, does not like, then he's patient upon it. And this is only for a believer, and this is also good for him. So, SubhanAllah, you know, we see that this win-win situation is already there as, uh, you know, a means of happiness, achieving happiness. So we say, Qaddarallah wa ma shafa'al. Anything uh, happens which is not pleasing to us, we say, Qaddarallah wa ma shafa'al. And as the Prophet Sallallahu you know, clearly mentioned, you know, if something good happens, he thanks Allah. And if something bad happens, you know, which he does not like, he's patient upon it, and both are good for him. So if we move ahead in our life with this mindset, let it be poverty, illness, sickness, loss of job, loss of uh, wealth, whatever, it ca- whatever the case might be, we always see win-win. We always see uh, you know, that h- how this is good for me and how can I come out of this with a positive mindset. So this is very important for us to know. And patience is something which is linked to success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked patience. Yani we can't move ahead. We can't go about achieving success if you're not patient. So this is a very important quality which uh, we must uh, understand. Now, as you mentioned earlier, that uh, this is the true concept of life. Now, there are certain points, you know, which uh, we must look at. Like how can we achieve? Why, how can we take the steps towards achieving these uh, things? Number one is Iman and Amal salihat this is something which you must focus on, that how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It has to come with iman, and it has to come with amal salihat. Now, the, the requirement for this is knowledge. The requirement, like, uh, how do we increase an iman? It has to be through knowledge. How do we do what Allah wants us to do? It has to be through knowledge. And if we look at this, uh, you know, uh, three-step uh, practical model, uh, so with Knowledge, sorry, four step practical model with knowledge. Number one, if you acquire knowledge, you will have better awareness. If you have better awareness, you will take better decisions. And if you take better decisions, you expect better outcomes. So, you know, with knowledge comes better awareness. With better awareness, you can take better decisions. And with better decisions, you can expect good outcomes by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just to give an example, you know, someone gains the knowledge about, say, uh, praying in the masjid. Now, he will have better awareness about it. Yani, what are the benefits? If I pray in the masjid, if I go to the masjid and praying in jama'ah, once he does that, he will take better decisions. He's going to prepare well. He's going to give importance to that aspect of praying in the masjid. And that will have better outcomes, you know, in terms of rewards, in terms of his spiritual up- upliftment and so on and so forth. So this is, we see, you know, this uh, framework works towards achieving success. Knowledge, awareness, uh, taking better decisions, and expecting better outcomes. Uh, point number two is, uh, you know, consistency. Consistency and making a routine for ourselves. So the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, this is uh, Hadith in Ibn Majah, graded Sahih, uh, take up good deeds only as much as you are able, for the best deeds are those done regularly, even if they are few. Yeah. So consistency is the key, you know, towards achieving happiness. You have to be consistent in your deeds. Not that, uh, you know, you do say, for example, like people open the Quran, one, two, three, four, four, five Qurans finished in the month of Ramadan. And then 11 months, uh, you know, subhanAllah, the Quran is just kept in the cupboard or on the shelf and they don't reopen it. This is a calamity. So consistency, even if it's like say, one juice or half a juice a day, understanding it, some parts memorizing and so on and so forth, you know, linking ourselves to the Quran, this is what is required. Similarly, uh, when it comes to our good deeds, like, like making a routine for ourselves and consistency, this is the key and this will bring uh, happiness. Point number two, uh, steps to, towards achieving happiness is as we mentioned, get out of this fictitious world. You know, so programs and these games and dramas. If 
uh, there is something useful, then that's fine, which you know, shows us the way towards our goal. But then if it's taking away from the actual goal, you know, the influencers and so on and so forth, if it's taking away from our actual goal of achieving happiness, then we need to come out of this world and we need to you know, just give it a break. Because at the end of the day, if our brain is being modeled you know, uh, by someone else towards a specific uh, thinking that you know, it takes us away from our goal, then this is something which we must uh, get out of as soon as possible. Point number three, uh, step number three is be happy in whatever situation you are. So again, this point, uh, how to achieve this. So we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Reading the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ will give us a lot of understanding of this life, you know, because the Prophet ﷺ had different times, as we discussed earlier, you know, uh, difficult situations and happy occasions as well. Happy in the sense, you know, worldly happiness. So that is what is required. And point number two, which the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned in the hadith, that look at those below you. Oh, that's just came to my mind right now. That I was going to say exactly the same hadith. Yes, please. You can. Yeah, just the fact that he said, you know, to look that, at those who are below you, not those who are above you. Because if you think about it, that, that could never end. There's always, unless you are the, the richest man in the whole world, <laughs> there's always going to be somebody richer than you. You could be a billionaire, but there's trillionaires or a millionaire and there's a billionaire and, you, you're, you, and if you keep always trying to say I have to have as much as that guy of course we're not saying you don't strive to uh, uh, and we're pretty much coming to the end of the show but you don't strive to uh, you know make that your goal but of course at the same time you can strive to uh, to attain those things that make life easier for you but they're not your main goal and you don't look at them as this is happiness. If I have this, I'm happy. If I'm not, so the Prophet said, I will end on this, inshallah. He said that look at those who are above you. Don't look at those who are above you, but look at the ones who are below you. Because generally speaking, again, unless you're the poorest person on earth, generally speaking, most of us, there's gonna, we can look down and we can see, okay, I don't have the most comfortable of life, but I have a job. I can eat food. Maybe in this particular country or that particular country, people don't even have food, don't have shelter, they, you know, and at least no matter how bad my circumstances are, I may not be the best earning person, I may not have the best position job compared to others I work with, but I have food, whereas other people don't have food, and we pretty much come to the end of the show. So we've had a, Jakalah for coming on, and also for tuning in, we've had an introduction here on the concept of happiness and some tips on how we can try to attain the true happiness, which is the happiness, the spiritual happiness, and inshallah, till next time, same time, same place, on Sharjah TV, I leave you as always, with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.